Hello friends, welcome to Code Crush Coding. In this video, we are going to learn about Java collections. So, collection is an important concept in the Java. Most of the questions in the interviews are related to the Java collections. So, it is important to understand this concept. So, let's first understand what is the meaning of collection in Java. The collections in Java is a framework that provides an architecture to store and manipulate the group of objects. So collection is basically a framework that is used to store and manipulate the group of objects. What is meant by a framework? A framework is a set of classes and interfaces which provides a ready-made architecture. A framework is nothing but a set of classes and interfaces. So framework contains both classes and interfaces which are already developed. So we can make use of them directly in our code. Java collections can achieve all the operations that you perform on a data. So whenever you have a variables or a data, what different type of operations you can perform, the different type of operations can be searching, sorting, insertion, manipulation. Manipulation is basically update and deletion. So all these operations can be performed on a, your Java collections. And what is collection? It is used to store and manipulate the group of objects. So basically you can consider as a variable that is storing a group of object that is your collection. Java collection framework provide many interfaces. So Java collection as it is a framework, it will have a classes and interfaces, right? So different type of interfaces that are available inside the Java collections are set, list, queue, DQ. We are going to learn all these interfaces and classes in detail in the upcoming videos. So this is the first video where we are just understanding what is Java collection and different type of classes that are present inside this java collections are array list vector link list priority queue has set link has set tree set all are these classes which implements this particular interfaces now how the java collection architecture actually looks like so this is the diagram this you can refer to understand the java collection so here in the Java collections, itable is the root interface. Here you could see this is the root interface. Interface is represented by this particular color, and the this particular color represents the classes. Okay, so this is the interface, and this is a root interface. So collection interface extends the itable interface. Okay, and different type of interfaces such as list, queue, set, all these extend the collection interface. And then as per this interfaces list, set, queue, these classes implement that particular interface. So array list, link list are implementing the list interface. Has set linked, has set is implementing the set interface. So there are specific properties related to these classes. Like if we consider the array list, it can contain the duplicate elements. But when we say the has set, so has set cannot contain the duplicate elements. So it is just an overview of array list and hat set. We will learn in the details in the upcoming videos. So understand first what is collection. Collection is a framework that is used to store and manipulate the group of object. Framework is nothing but a set of classes and interface which provide a ready-made architecture. And in the Java collections, you could have many interfaces and classes that we have seen here. The interfaces and classes. And Java collections can achieve all the operations that you perform on a data just searching, sorting, insertion, manipulation and deletion. So this is the answer to what is Java collection. Okay. But another thing is what is the need for the collection framework? So why do we need this collection framework in the Java? So to understand this, let's consider an example. Now suppose a variable is created to store a data and an integer value is assigned to it. So let's say we have a variable, let's say int num1. Okay, and it's storing the integer value, let's say 10. So now this particular 10 value is assigned to this variable num1. Now we want to store another data of the same data type. Let's say now I want to store 11 also. So how I can store this? I need to make another variable, let's say int num2 is equal to 11, right? And now if we want to store 100 values, then what will happen? 
then the disadvantage here is we need to create 100 different variables right so it is a time consuming process so what we can do to store the 100 different values we need to make use of an array right now we can declare an array to store the large number of values let's say instead of 100 we consider 10 okay so here you need to declare an array first so how to declare an array we have already covered this in the previous videos of the array topic so here we will have int and name of array let's say arr followed by square braces and then new int and then the size of array so here i will say size of array is 10 so this is the declaration of array now we will assign values to this array so we know array stored the values in the form of an index position so array of 0 now let's say 12 and this will continue till the array of 9 okay because the last index position will be size minus 1 as the size is 10 the last index position will be 9 because array indexing starts from 0 and now let's say here we have the value 20 now in this way from 0 1 2 3 till 9 we can store 10 different values inside this single variable array right so that is why the array was introduced but there were also certain limitations to the array so what were the limitations in the array so array is of fixed size means we could have only the value stored as much as the value of the size of array if you have the array size 10 then we can store 10 values inside the array but with the collection it is growable in nature we don't need to fix the size of collection as per the values added inside the collection it will grow by default let's say if the size is 10 and only five elements are stored then it is a waste of memory right if we provide here 10 as the size of array and here we have let's just store only two values then the remaining eight values are representing as a waste of memory but in case of collection it adjusts size according to the elements so it does not lead to the wastage of memory so arrays can hold only homogeneous data elements so what does it mean by homogeneous data element means a data of a single type it can store the values of integer type only then if we declare an array of string type then it will store the values of string type if the array is of double data type then it will store the values of double but collection can hold homogeneous as well as heterogeneous data element okay so it can have the different data type values inside a single collection memory management is poor in array and we know how the memory management is poor because if the size is 10 and we provide only five elements then it is a vestige of memory but memory management is very effective in case of collection because it adjusts the size according to elements present inside this so this was the overview of the java collection what is java collection and why we need the collection framework in java so from the next video we will learn the different classes that are used inside this collection so that's it in this video we will cover another topic in next video thank you for watching